Hello and welcome to the Linux Lads. Um, as usual, my name is Shane. I'm Connor. My name is Mike. And this week we're also joined by a very special guest. Um, we are joined by Matthew of Lutris fame. How are you, Matthew? Hello. Very good. And you? Great, great. Thank you. So, thank you so much for coming on. This is amazing. Um, it's uh, like it's a really important project so it's really cool to have you on um so um this week you know usual quarantine stuff is going on i don't know i don't i don't know what else we can really say about that at this point (laughs) (laughs) other than just yes coronavirus is still a thing let's let's move on um day one million we're still (laughs) under quarantine (laughs) yeah dead day seventy nine thousand in the big brother house um so yeah so uh yeah this week anyway or this fortnight i should say um mike you were moving some dublin linux web stuff which you're always doing yeah because uh basically uh we the connor discovered a cheaper uh vendor for our vpss a company called hetzner uh that uh you know a german company that helps us uh save uh you know decent amount of money relatively speaking so I was moving from our previous BPS provider to that one, and I thought, okay, if I'm going to do that, I might as well improve on the infrastructure. So I jumped headfirst into Ansible and Docker, knowing neither, and basically lost all my hair in the process. <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, we are reading the we are reading the, the recording notes from our uh, newly running Nextcloud server, and the website is up. So something must be working, I guess. <laughs> all your hair yeah yeah yeah. that's uh you know uh two weeks ago if you don't remember i was like i had full of full head of hair <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> yeah i mean i was i was pugging i was uh throwing my mane left and right and center and uh, <laughs> now uh, oh. all i can do is just i don't know lenin whatever so yeah um yeah mike is the the kind of the the coal face at the engine room of of all these things so i think props. you'll find uh, that the official title is the chief engineer yeah, well i let you say that that's fine um, exactly yeah don't steal the glory um so uh yeah for me um after saying on uh linux spotlight with rocco actually that i forgot to mention the last time the last two episodes um yeah i was on linux spotlight with rocco of uh, uh, big daddy linux and you know i forgot completely forgot to give him a shout out um so so sorry rocco um i'm just a very selfish person or something i don't know but uh yeah that was a great experience it was cool i had a chat with rocco i got to ramble on all the things i don't get to ramble on here so that was really nice um so yeah just wanted to give him a, a mention um if you haven't seen it please go see it (laughs) <laughs> um but other than that like on that i mentioned that i i'm not a distro hopper and on this podcast i've said on several different occasions that i'm not a distro hopper anymore but recently i've kind of had to eat my words because i went on a bit of an odyssey or something um so the story was i you're I a know, reformed from, distro hopper <laughs> a reformed born, di- born yeah. again distro hopper. <laughs> But uh, I, as you know, I was on Zorin and I was loving Zorin. Um, but then I swapped out my hard drives because they were very old and I was afraid they were going to fail. So, um, uh, yeah, I swapped out the hard drives and I thought, what the hell, I'll give Pop! OS a whirl and absolutely fell in love with it. I thought it was amazing. Um, but uh, then I just started to get some weird problems. No, sorry, I tell a lie. I went to Ubuntu 2004 first and then to Pop! OS. But uh, Ubuntu was about a week. Um, so, yeah, the distro hopper in me was completely gone out the window, or was completely back in the window, I should say. But, uh, yeah, so Pop! OS. Um, but then I'm just uh, getting some weird boot problems now. It's just, I don't know, every second time I boot, I just get these weird terminal errors going on. I don't know. I've talked about it in the Telegram chat, but... Um, yeah, I'm just not sure what's going on. So now I think I'm just going to nuke and pave and clone my Zorin OS hard drive that I still have and just go with that. So yeah, I'm no longer a distro hopper. 
or I am a distro hopper after not being a distro hopper. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of them. Yeah. He's um he's Schrodinger's distro hopper. He's he's both a, a distro hopper and not a distro hopper at the same time. Distro hopper, yeah. <laughs> um so what I've been up to it was uh, my birthday recently and I turned <coughs> um, um, um yeah the <laughs> whole what thing age? What? What age? Tell us two numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I could give you two two numbers. They wouldn't be the uh, uh, okay. I I joined. I turned uh, thirty four, but um, the thing about right behind you, buddy, slowly migrating your way through the, your thirties is you don't want to uh, um, admit it as much as you as you as you previously like. Like when you're in your twenties, yeah, I, I turned twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. Uh, oh, okay, now the numbers are starting to increase. <laughs> well, oh, with, due to nature of of aging, but it's just after a while, and I'm sure there's now people in their forties and people in their fifties listening to this, shouting at it, going, "You're still you're still young," but it, it's all relative. But um, exactly, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, one of those things where. It's 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 not the novelty as it used to be, uh, and I suppose slowly you just kind of get sick of it. So um, it's uh, I did a kind of I it was on it was during the week, so I messaged a couple of my friends and said, "Do you want to um, pop on to a virtual pub and just kind of raise a glass?" And the, it was all casual and informal and but because everyone had just done a, a day's work including myself we were kind of nodding off at about, after about an hour so it wasn't much it wasn't much of a party yeah. <laughs> yeah that's the thing yeah that's the thing with the 30s you know the, the the you get the few beers into you and then you're just like 10 years previous you would have been like okay right that's just the beginning <laughs> so <laughs> but then it's like no i think i'll go to sleep uh, <laughs> I have to be up early in the morning. Yeah, all of all of those drunken hijinks are is reserved to the weekend, and even then, send it seldomly. Matthew, um, I'm going to go to you because we haven't spoken to you for a long time. <laughs> um, what have you been up to for the last little while? Uh, working a lot on the um, on the Lutris website. That's been keeping me busy a lot uh, for the past week. Planning for a server migration because seeing uh, I mean quite a bit of traffic and also I mean the 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 website is has been slow for for a while and I've been paying for the server for like a few months now I mean pretty long time and not using it so now we're getting prepared for this new production setup using Docker using like a much more tighter integrated setup that's going to be pushed like. Maybe today or maybe like tomorrow. Oh, cool. Um, there's also been like a few uh, Lutris updates. So I've been working on uh, on that. Uh, there's going to be an update focused on MAME mostly. So uh, if you have been using Lutris, you know that you have, we have like a MAME, the MAME emulator. Mm. We used to have like MESS as well, which is like the home computer, home console version of MAME. And we plan to deprecate it and just bring like just just MAME that handles everything. So that that's going to be like coming soon. So cool. Um, I I don't know if this is a really stupid question or not, but um, is there any plans for uh, an ARM build of Lutris, or is that does that already exist? Um, that kind of exists already. I mean, it's not really officially supported, but since uh, Lutris itself is just Python, then you install like a, a Linux desktop on ARM. You just install the dependencies and you can install uh, Lutris. So there is a um, package for uh, OpenSUSE, the ARM version of OpenSUSE, even, uh, even for PC, I think. But there's nothing to compile, so it just will run on any system. Then you have to rev the actual runners uh, to be built on ARM. So you have to have uh, RetroArch, you have to have MAME, and all of those programs compiled for ARM, and that's most of the problem. And obviously you won't have Wine, so a bunch of games won't be available because they're not available on Wine. Um, all the native games as well, I mean, that's going to be a problem because most of them are for x86. Um, 
so yeah it's it's possible right now but it's not been worked on a lot so we want to have some something better and i've seen some i've seen like a project uh like last week or uh, two weeks ago from some guy who was making some kind of x x86 emulator for arm that was open source because and it was supposedly running pretty well so i'm really interested in that because that could bring a few games on arm as well i uh so i am myself not exactly a gamer so since we've already thrown the lutris name around could you quickly please explain to people like me and not explain to me like i'm five because if i was five i would know but explain to me like i'm 60 what, <laughs> what is what is lutris and how does it compare to the one thing i know about gaming which is steam steam okay so the big difference between steam and lutris is that steam is a game store so they sell games and you can get them from steam lutris we just uh make the games easy to run and install on linux so there's a lot of games out there only a fraction of them are made up for linux so how are we going to play all those remaining remaining games that have not been released for linux so we use all kind of tools like one of them is wine that will run uh games windows or uh, for example i was mentioning mame as well which will run games for the arcades um, we put them all together. We have like builds for all those programs that user can download. And we offer like an easy way for user to say, okay, I want to play this game. We'll, we'll give you all the tools, all the installation process to do this very simply in just, in just a few clicks uh, without having to set up like complicated programs or anything like this. It's having a straightforward way to set up your games not not purchasing them you have to buy them like somewhere else but we try to cover like a lot of game stores so we cover steam itself so you mentioned steam we have like gog as well uh, we have the epic game store we have uh you play all those stores you can buy games from and then install them on linux and play them and with some we'll set up like the all the, the tools and um, all these little improvements we can make, such as like uh, we have tools like DXVK that was used to uh, to convert the graphics API to, to something that runs great on Linux. Uh, everything we can do to make the games run better, we'll try to uh, bring it to the users. That's cool. Yeah, it's essentially like a desktop gaming client or no sorry a desktop gaming portal for game games for linux ah. <laughs> <laughs> and so you you'd use you probably have used you you mentioned wine um and play on linux um with something similar that i've i've discovered in the past and i've i've used in the past um but it sounds to be that this is almost all encompassing like you're you're using um uh, APIs and things like DS, DXVK and Wine and things like that, but also just simply being a front end. I mean, if um, if there's a native uh, Linux game on Steam and you, you also sign in with your GOG library or or something like that, and they're they're all native games, but it's just a, a central launching platform. So, I, I, uh, my understanding, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is it's it works in both camps. It's both uh, a, a way of getting non Steam or non Linux native games to run on Linux, but also as a, a cent central place for your Steam game. Games, your your um your GOG games um and also games that you you um you just downloaded uh yourself as standalone executables. Yeah. So the idea is that if there is a way to run a game on Linux, then Lutris should provide the tools and uh, method to uh to get it running on Linux easier easy. So it does. What we try to get and popularize is um drm free games so there's very at this point with proton and steam play and all this there's very little points to running steam games with lutris because tim will just do it like pretty pretty well um in the past we had like wine steam which would run 
like the Windows version of Steam, I and mean, we still have it, but now that Steam plays here, well, there's only a handful of games that won't run like well with uh, Proton, so there's only a few use cases for, for Wine Steam. Um, but really, we want to try pushing with um, Humble Bundle and GOG and all the stores that provide DRM free games, and also er, all the, the, the stuff that's running like homebrews and all, we try to popularize this because Steam is is doing fine by itself. So we try to do like everything else that's not Steam. So be it like DRM free or even launching uh, Blizzard games like with uh, Battle.net or Ubisoft games like with Uplay. We try to, to focus on everything that is not Steam while we let Steam do its thing. And yeah, we still have, we can, still can do the both, but it's still like, a, a, there's a lot outside of Steam, yeah. Uh, one thing that I was just thinking while you're, do you, um, when you mentioned DRM free, um, do you have um, uh, itch.io integration or? Um, uh, itch.io, I mean, it has a very good client, so we haven't focused on that a lot, but we have some installers that will ask for the itch.io files, like game files. Um, but since the, the, the client for each other is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty well good, made. Yeah. I mean, it's, it works. Whereas you have something like GOG. I mean, it has, where is the client for GOG on Linux? Like people have been asked. Non-existent. <laughs> yeah. And even if you, if there was a client, then maybe the GOG client would only install Linux games. Whereas, I mean, the Lutris, Lutris will install like any game from GOG, be it like The Witcher uh, or I don't know, like even the, the GOG that ha that don't have a native port, they will just install fine. So maybe it's a better thing that we don't have this official client because the official client would only support the officially supported games, whereas like Lutris is like, yeah, we'll install it, it will be fine. It's, when I checked it last time, when I checked it... Um... A few weeks back, I actually it it show, looked to me like that's something that was put together by uh, let's say like one person in order to uh, maybe facilitate playing of one game and then another one and then maybe uh, that you know there was a common thread so it kind of grew into a into a launch like this. Is that how it happened, or am I totally off? Uh... I mean, the the first very first thing I did for for like before Lutris was a launcher, like kind of a program, like a Python program to to configure uh, Oblivion, so the Elder Scrolls Four. Uh, but then I wanted to have something that was more flexible, and from the very beginning, I think the the idea was to support pretty much every game that could run on Linux, and from the very start I had like this whole idea of bringing back a bunch of bringing together like a bunch of emulators and running like giving a way for to run them on linux without um yeah having to hunt down for emulators or having to hunt down for settings and at the time i was considering uh, contributing for to play on linux and i read some of the code to play on linux and i was like uh, I mean, this only deals with wine games, and I really want to have like Linux games and Scum VM games and DOS games and all those. Uh, so I wasn't really happy with the the how uh, Play on Linux was written. So that's really what pushed me to uh, to get started with Lutris. Is I wanted really to have something that would encompass all games and not just not 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 just a few games, not just like Windows games. But really, something that would do like Linux, Windows, and all the other consoles as well. How long ago was that? Um, about ten years ago, yeah, a bit more than ten years ago. And uh, one thing I was I was curious. I mean, um, uh, it's not not a technical question, but where did the otter mascot or the otter logo came from? Come from? Um, well, at first I, w I went with this uh, idea of otter because it's. An animal that likes to play, uh, and then some friend who was like also a graphics artist said, "Okay, well I might uh, try and draw draw a logo for you," and it did, and that turned out great. And yeah, I mean we kept it, and then we 
made a few changes to that um, uh, other logo, but yeah, it's kind of stuck from the original one. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the uh, uh, was there a version that kind of was almost holding like uh, an old Atari? Yeah, game stick the Atari joystick, like and you can still yeah. find it like in some websites or maybe some places that haven't been updated. The uh, first one had this little Atari joystick uh, on the middle. Yeah. Um, needless to say, like um, you, you'll probably get an angry letter from some lawyers if you if you get that off. <laughs> that looks very similar to oh, um, so yeah. I mean, I don't think that's um, um, Atari would be angry at us. I mean, they they haven't used that that design in in a very long time. They're still Atari is still struggling at making their own console, like at shipping it. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so that's true. They have bigger problems right now. They they wanted but they wanted to have to ship this console with one of the joystick would be like the one of those classic ones from the Atari age. So yeah, I mean it would be cool. I want to see if this this Atari console will happen because I would love to to have like Lutris uh shipped on on, on that stuff. So yeah, I mean I'm I want to have this happen, yeah. If they have, has anybody ever approached you with like um, hardware stuff, saying we would like to put Lutris on 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 our hardware? I've had like people a very long time ago, I think, that had some emails, but from people who didn't have like a real project going, they just said, "Oh, it would be cool if that happened, like having some kind of Lutris console." Um, but the the project wasn't real enough to to really happen. Um, I mean, even Valve tried to do something like this and it didn't go anywhere. So, at, at yeah, that, with their Steam boxes, yeah, like the Steam box doesn't go anywhere. Um, like really, there's not been a project. All the projects of like um, console PCs have like can kind of tanked and it didn't go anywhere. So. I'm still waiting on one. I still would would like to have some kind of project that does that. And even today, I, mean, I have a PC running Steam and it's on the TV and it's still not good enough. So, and I really I have Lutris and it's still not usable on the TV. So, at this point, I really wish that we would make like a full screen interface that runs well on TV and and. Even if it's not like a hardware manufacturer, if it's something that anyone can install, I would like that. If it's something that's okay, there's not a hardware we sell, you can just build it yourself. And here's the software we can install, here's like the software recommendation and the hardware recommendation, and just you can set that up by yourself. And there you go. And if, yeah, and if, if someone wants to sell the hardware, I mean, that would be great too. But uh, having some something that you can install yourself to be good start. From what from a, what it sounds like uh, you're describing is like um, get a, a Raspberry Pi and have a Lutris OS image for Pi or something and just download and then just b- mm-hmm. put it on a SD card and put it into Raspberry Pi or something. Um, yeah, no, no, that that'll be very something very interesting. Yeah, but something better than a Raspberry Pi is something with a GPU. We've tried. We've tried installing Xonotic on uh, on the Rock Pro or something, and it didn't work very well. I think so. It it probably ARM is not ready. I think the more the more powerful ARM things are like the Nvidia Shield TV or something. Or mm-hmm. well, yeah, I've mentioned ARM a little bit before, and I would say it's, so far it's like not the best platform for gaming. Uh, we would need yeah. to have some. And I bought the the first Pinebook, the non Pro one. And at first I said, okay, this is will be a great machine for developing the, the ARM version of Lutris, but it turned out that it didn't have like the the Mali GPU drivers weren't baked in of any Linux distro I, I tried. So the Android build of uh, on Pinebook could run like GTA 3 and all those Android games like really great. And as soon as I, w- I would try it like Manjaro or like a KDE Neon, it wouldn't be able to run like DOSBox or like RetroArch un- unless I would like recompile the whole thing with some driver. I mean, it was really complicated and never managed to do anything with it. So I kind of abandoned the, the idea of using that as the development like platform for Lutris. 
um, yeah, maybe it will happen like in the future. Maybe I will get a Pinebook Pro, but that didn't go anywhere. So what's your favorite hardware that you currently play on? Um, like PC, I currently play on either my uh, workstation, which is uh, i7 and with a Radeon card, or have this uh, Ryzen uh, machine that I, that is on the TV that has my old NVIDIA card. But yeah, um, currently I would say that I still um, like Intel more, at least for a workstation, although like the Ryzen are pretty good. And mm -hmm. I used to be really big on NVIDIA GPUs, but I would say that now, yeah, I'd say it's a good time to get an AMD GPU. They're pretty good. They're pretty like cheaper than what you can get for an NVIDIA. And they run pretty. Uh, they run everything like really great. So yeah, I'd say this is a good and time the, for And the the, the drivers are in the kernel as well. As, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm hard on this uh, gaming in the living room with Linux uh, thing right now. Um, I've I've been trying my best. Like I I've I've just been gaming has been a bit of a theme for me over the last month or so. Like uh, I got an old Nintendo DS Lite, and uh, that was really cool because I could put like. ROMs on it and shit like that, you know, legally obtained, of course. Um, and uh, I was also putting like uh, I got a Mega Pi case for my Raspberry Pi three, uh, so it has like hardware switches and everything, so you can reset and you can turn it on and off, which is amazing. Um, and it looks like a Sega Mega Drive two case. Um, so you put your Raspberry Pi three in there, and that's going to be like a living room retro thingy. Um, I also toyed with the idea of actually putting together a Steam box, like you were saying, because like Ryzen's are so bloody cheap these days, and you can get an uh, an APU chip or something like that, and you could run, you know, some fairly modest games, but you you know you're not going to be playing anything too intense in the living room, in in my experience anyway. So, you know, that could be a nice like low cost build for the living room. So, but you know. Because of the pandemic, we have all this extra money because <laughs> we're not going anywhere, you know? So why not? Uh, do, what, what distro do you use for uh, for gaming? What's your, if you have a favorite distro, unless you distro hop like Shane. Um, <laughs> no, I mostly use Pop! OS these days. And it has, it's like Ubuntu, but has like more recent graphics talk. So yeah, I mostly stay on that. Uh, I like Manjaro as well. Uh, I've had a good experience yeah. with that, um, but yeah, usually I mean I'm, I used to run Ubuntu and then I would run Ubuntu plus the Pop OS stuff install on top of it. So now I just run Pop OS, um, and it has Lutris by by default in its repo, so that's nice. <laughs> that's very nice. What did what did you say? The whole Lutris is done in Python. Yes. So oh. Like the interface, like the UI side is done in Python because there's a whole lot of, bunch of like external programs that plug into Lutris, but the the UI, the website is all Python. Um, the the desktop application is done with Python and uh, GTK, so it's it's not going to use like Python code uh, itself. It's mostly going to be using this. Uh, C code, like the C libraries that will plug into Python, so it will, will be pretty fast. Um, and the so, website so uses one? Django. Huh? Uh, that's a new one that you are building, or uh, you said you said the application is going to be using. Is it? Are you building? No, no, a it's new uh, one? currently oh. using. Yeah, it's uh, ah, using a sorry. GTK3, like the PyG objects. So and, it's uh, and Django. And uh, the website is using Django. Um, and other like uh, Python libraries, yeah. What do you use, if you don't mind me asking? I'm I'm curious, probably to the detriment of the show, but I'm really curious. What do you use for development? What if you have a favorite IDE or if you type it all in Notepad? Um, I have this uh, this Vim setup that I've been working for the past ten years. So it's nice. not really Vim. It's like <laughs> Vim plus fifty plugins and a five hundred lines Vim RC. So if you oh, give well, me yeah. fine, <laughs> <laughs> Mike very happy. <laughs> that's well, that surpasses my stuff, right? Um, I think my VMRC is less than a hundred lines long. So, <laughs> so yeah. For shame. If you give me a, a bare Vim, I'm pretty lost. So I, what what I need is like Vim, but my Vim, not not someone else Vim or just not a bare Vim. 
Do you have like a safe where you have a USB stick with your Vimar C on it that so that everything else uh, burns down? You still have that? It's uh, well, it's got <laughs> GitHub. So I, if it's if GitHub is down, well, I, hopefully I still have it in into one of my machines because the first time, first thing I do when I set up machines just clone my dot files and so pretty much my dot files are all on, all on the machines I, I have. So I guess I don't really need a USB because I just need to have like access of one of my machines and I'm good. Uh, one thing I'm I'm just curious about as I'm clicking through the interface here is um, over towards the top left, there's a, a kind of a sign in button and it's suggesting that I would set up a, um, a online account. Would that would just be, uh, would there be any kind of synchronization in that? If you sign into your account on one, more than one computer or? Yes. Or would you... Yes. Uh, so, I'll say it like I'll be very honest, but there's very little point in having a Lotus account right now. <laughs> okay. You can do pretty much anything. Uh, in well, you can play the games in Lutris without the Lutris account. You need an account if you want to participate, if you want to write installers, if you want to uh, to submit patches like to the installers and all that kind of stuff. You will need an account, but if you're just a gamer and you just want to play games, you can do all of this without an account. Um, what you can do is build your Lotus library and say, okay, I want to to build this library and they will be synchronized across all your computer where you have Lutris uh, installed. And then what you can do is synchronize your Steam library with your, with your Lutris library, which is that all your Steam games will be done, uh, will go into your Lutris library. Um, this isn't as straightforward as I would want it to be because, for example, when you delete a game from your Lutris client, then it doesn't get get deleted from your Lutris library. So when you open Lutris again, it will come back. So I mean, all that kind of stuff. And also, I want to have some kind of uh, friend list. I want to have some uh, save back uh, backup for like game saves. So when you finish playing a game, uh, all your saves are backed up on the like uh, the Lutris server. So <clears throat> some of this will be only for Patreon supporters or like um, any kind of supporters at the beginning, I mean, or for paying, uh, uh, yeah, for paying supporters at first. But there will be some um, more uses for having a Lutris account in the, the near future. Right now, I'm saying it's like not that useful, but it will become more, more useful. So um, replicating some of the features that um, uh, th that Steam has mm -hmm. or the um, GOG Galaxy has, where it's um, yeah, clouds, um, clouds, cloud saves, yeah, cloud, sa uh, cloud saves, and uh, messaging your your friends and things like that. Um, I mean, uh, messaging is not the most important feature I want to bring. What I would like to bring is that's something that has. I don't think it has been done yet. Is some kind of having the concept of a offline multiplayer lobby, where it, you would it would do like matchmaking for games that don't have a lot of players. So you would potentially be uh, in a lobby of a game like all the time. So say, uh, what's a game that's not that's open source but doesn't have a lot of players? So Free say safe. for example. FreeSave, Zonotic. Yeah, yeah. Zonotic, FreeSave, perfect. So say you want to play FreeSave, but no one is ever playing that. So you say, I I play FreeSave and I'm ready to play FreeSave as long as there are a bunch of people playing FreeSave. So you subscribe to FreeSave as um, your offline lobby. And whenever like there's like 10 people uh, who have FreeSave and they're like offline in their multiple lobby, then Lutris will pop up a notification saying, hey, you are enough uh, players to start a um, free save game. Do you want to start a free save game? And that way you don't have to sit in the lobby of a game in order to, to, to start a game. You just have to, to subscribe to a game. And when like uh, uh, enough users are ready to play, then it will just tell you, hey, you're, you're able to play and you don't have to to start a game, of course, but that way you know that a bunch of people who have the same interest in games will be able to, to play the game. 
So that's a way to bring like popularity into like games that like open source games that because there's always those empty lobbies and no one ever plays those games. But if you can bring those people together, then that's that's a good be that could be a good way to popularize those games. Uh, but if you have uh, like I'm as I said, I'm not exactly a gamer, and I looked at Loot Race a few weeks ago after a year of. Uh, uh, like it was a year before because I like really don't uh, spend much time on games and uh, I think I massively overthought the process right so I thought right there is a Grand Theft Auto the original one that you can download for free uh, and I think I got a little bit lost in it eventually I was able to play it and that was great because I'm a horrible person I like killing people but uh, <laughs> I uh, how do you what is the workflow for Lutris? If you if if I was to come to Lutris for the first time, what do I like what am I meant to do from the first visit to playing a game? Let's say I wanna play Free Sif or or any anything really. Is there like one workflow to, to, to do? Do I select um, the game from your menu or do I Yeah, so let's let's start for Free Sif because that one should be very straightforward. As I said, we're not a game store, so we're not going to sell you video games, but FreeSim being an open source game, we can just have a build and make it available to anyone. So the first thing you'll want is having the Lutris clients installed on your desktop. That way, I mean, you can get the, the games installed. Once you get have the, the, the client installed, then you'll need some what we call runners. So runners are programs that will run the video games. In the case of FreeSafe, you don't get, you don't need any runner because it's a Linux game. So Linux itself, like the Linux kernel, is your runner. If you wanted to run a Windows games, then you would need Wine, most uh, probably one of our custom Wine builds. But right now, you you don't need to uh, own anything on any game store. You don't need to have any extra program. You just need to have the Lutris clients. You need to search for FreeSieve either on the website or in the clients. Then you click install. It will go through the whole install process. It will be like mostly automated. Um, you only have to choose a location where the game will be installed. So Lutris will not um, install the game in like an hidden folder you have to give it some location where to install it, uh, which is a bit different from like Steam or Play on Linux, where they will just choose a path for you to install. Here you, you can choose where to install it. Um, and then it will like download the files, like extract archives and all that stuff. And you should be left with a, a, a game to launch. You just have, have to double click the game and you're ready to play. So what version would that be? Uh... Would that be the version that's uh, particular to my distribution? So if I'm on Manjaro, would it be the one from AUR? Or or, or would that be uh, compiled from GitLab or uh, like the release? Or is it different for every game? Um, that would be the version, that would probably be the version that we maintain. Uh, so either it's, so there's going to be an install script. It's not going to be able to reference any like distro packages because the script has to be able to run on either Fedora or Ubuntu or Manjaro without being dependent on what the distro has. So it's not going to, to use the, the, the package from that distribution, even though it is able to import that game. If you haven't installed, you can ha you have another entry in like the, in a menu with import games. You can just import the FreeSieve version of that. But if you're going to use the, the Lutris installer, then either uh, the game makers will have um, a build themselves, so we can just link that and it will download the build. Or if they don't, then we have to build the game ourselves. And in that case, we'll have we'll maintain some kind of build script in Bash that will take the source, download them, and upload the build on our servers. So it's basically like the package scripts when you when you install from the AUR an application on uh, on uh, Arch or Manjaro. I think I should know this because I'm already Manjaro, but I don't know this. I think you basically just download a script at first and it builds or pulls something from the internet depending on each package. So this is similar to 
what Lothra uh, does. From, 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 yeah, from the console readout, I've, I've seen the, um, sometimes it pulls down a, a .deb or sometimes it pulls down a, a an RPM or something like that. So, so it doesn't necessarily have to be native, but yeah, it's it's a script that pulls it down and then uh, un, uh, uh, uncompresses it and then installs it. Yeah. And these, so so these uh, Lutri scripts, uh, do they? Do, is it like a community effort, or do you have to? make them all or can anybody just submit their own and do people do that is there a big community around it um yeah it's growing it's the the process is still not perfect but i mean there's so many games that it would be impossible for like the team to maintain all of them by themselves so there's a moderation process where like anyone can modify a script and then they have to go into to approval and even the even that it's cumbersome so i'm trying to like sh- streamline that process and and making the whole approval process easier. Uh, but it's also, from a security standpoint, it's tricky because we let anyone point like any archive and say, okay, just download that file and run it, run it on your computer. So we need to have some kind of moderation going on so that people just don't, like you don't, don't get a virus from Lutris, for example, yeah. And is that, uh, but but you are installing in the user's home directory, aren't you? Yes. Uh, you don't necessarily run with privileges. I mean, that can cause as much damage as. Uh, yeah, I know. As yeah. Installing with root. I mean, I would be very angry if someone uh, ins- uh, deleted all my user files far more than if someone has uh, deleted my programs. I mean, that is. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's so we true. have to be careful, like, what we uh, let people do in their scripts, and we have to. Um, to be careful with what we let in, but um, still, it's like a community effort. Like anyone can uh, improve those scripts. I I just wanted to ask you. You 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 say um, so, right? So uh, you download this script, and you say that for uh, Linux games like FreeSafe or Xenotic, you wouldn't need to do anything else. But for a uh, Windows game, you need a runner. For example, the Wine Runner. Uh, does this does Lutris install it as well, or is it? In, do you have to have it installed on your computer before you run the Lutris uh, Windows game? Um, well, we do recommend to have Wine installed onto your system, but that's because Wine comes with a bunch of dependencies, and we want you to have those available onto your system before running games. Uh, that will make sure that they actually run. But we will also uh, download and use our own wine builds. So it's, I don't know if you know, like, so you have wine that will run like a window, Windows application, and then you have wine staging, which is wine, but with a bunch of patches which will, which will like fix some issues. And it's a bit more experimental. And we, we built on top of wine staging. So we have wine plus its patches and put a bunch of other patches on top of that so that we make a, some other games run. And on top of that, we have our build that have one or two extra patches on on top of all the, all the, the stuff we have. So really we maintain uh, all those builds of wine and sometimes it's just for one game. It sometimes it will be for, uh, I remember we had something for uh, Monster Hunter, or we had something for Detroit. Like maybe we all we'll need a patch for one or two games, and that's I mean that can be a runner by itself. So yeah, I mean we we can use like the regular version of Wine, but most likely what we'll want is something very custom that has been made especially like very especially for running games. So yeah, we we put a lot of efforts and this is working very close to the, with the wine team and some people who work in the wine project and proton as well um we do maintain some patches uh that will improve the compatibility so it's, it's something that you a concept that you came across or you introduced earlier was the whole idea of of just having the uh, um, a local kind of game lobby or something like that, and uh, I can really see it as is a as a central kind of showcase for um for uh, getting multiplayer for certain games. I mean, um, uh, 
uh, like Open or A or uh, Zero ED or or um, the oh, is it Warzone? That's another open source game. I mean, I know Zonotic already has its 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 lobby lo- uh, launching system and everything like that. But um, I sp- you could add Zonotic to list and it's kind of accumulate and uh, all all of those uh, five or six games and uh, all the the other ones and then um, just have a central kind of launch and say listen um i have a couple of friends and like we, we want to play open or a today or we want to play um what is uh open td uh, ttd is the um the 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 train one um it's, some of them were really good games but um maybe they're they're not getting the exposure that they they might have liked and a part of it could be the the social aspect to us that you could you could have um um Lutris as the, as a way of bringing them all together to bring them to make um gaming more social rather than um having single player so it's a, it's a very intriguing um idea so um so uh yeah no it's, i just wanted to make that comment was it's it's a very good idea i mean it's 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 uh quite interesting make a linux lads lobby or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> we would have to have a game right uh why how many people do you work on this like so is it and uh, like, stop me if I'm asking too many personal questions about is it, is it, uh, is it, is this your job? Is this your nine to five? And is this your company, or are you just working on it by yourself? Um, I wish this was my job, but uh, sadly I still have to find other jobs once in a while to to get the money in order to to, to be to work on Lotus. Um, right now it is my uh, full time job until like next week. I'm starting a new uh, contract, um, but this time I'm making this a part-time contract, so I'm still. It's getting big enough that I have to make time for Lutris, and uh, I was. I said, okay, I cannot take this full-time contract. I'm going to focus on Lutris exclusively, and then uh, the employer was in touch with said, okay, well, let's make it part-time. I said, oh well, that will work. Um, I wish also that I had more people who worked in, uh, on the projects. Uh, there's been uh, some, I've had some help with the websites uh, lately. Uh, so that's, that's nice. I, I'm always glad to have some, uh, some patches coming. Um, and I've noticed lately that I had um, a bit more patches coming from uh, from from computer contributors that have not uh that are pretty new so i like having like new contributors uh and uh yeah that that's it feels like it's getting somewhere that's it's building some kind of team it's it took a while to get there but it's i'm seeing like the uh improvements how can people support you? I think I remember there is a pop-up on your application that says support yeah, us. Yeah, I mean, that pop-up, I'm, get, I'm trying to get rid of it and change it with something else. Uh, but right now, there's a problem saying that you can support the project on Patreon. Um, there's also um, Libera Pay. That's also an option. You can also just give uh, with PayPal. That's fine. Um, but I, I, I try to... Um, I mean, there's such a backlog of things to do, and I, I want to bring figure, features for the people who are supporters on Patreon because right now they just only get access to our Discord server, and I want to be able to give them more. Uh, like we talked about this cloud save thing, and yeah, that's that will be one of the features for uh, Patreon supporters. Um, yeah, that that's the simplest platform right now. It's like uh, PayPal and uh, and Patreon. Um, one question here that we have we have um, written down is, um, obviously since you're a, a passionate gamer, um, otherwise you wouldn't have come come up with the whole idea of of Lutris. Um, are there any standout games for for you that um you 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 found that you spent a lot of time on or are particularly memorable for you? Um, I mean it's fun because right now I don't think of a single game. That I would want to play that I cannot play on Linux, so that's a pretty good time. Yes, that's um, that's, that's very good. Right, yeah. right now, I play. I'm spending a lot of time on um, Stardew Valley, 
since we have a lot of time on our hand. And I've, I've been uh, really big on those games like uh, Minecraft or Terraria that really suck you in and you spend like hours and hours um, playing them. And since, yeah, I've been, I've had a, a lot of time and that, that's, uh, I've been playing a lot of that. I like also uh, games that are like Darksiders or uh, those like action RPGs. Um, and I'm pretty happy that we have Street Fighter, Street Fighter V, like that is playable on Linux now. That's been playable like for a few uh, days now. And also let's not forget uh, Doom Eternal, which was playable like two days after its release on Windows. I was like, yes, <laughs> Doom Eternal. <laughs> um, I was playing Doom recently, yeah. I mean, not Doom Eternal. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really thrilled to have all those new games uh, that are being released and that are playable on Linux almost right after their release. Um, I'm not a big player of those multiplayer games like Fortnite or Apex Legends. And I'm, I know that it's sad that no one can play them on Linux because of the anti-cheats. But personally, I mean, I don't care that much because I'm more of a like, single player game or like the multiplayer games I like are more co-op. Uh, or like, yeah, I'm not really a competitive player, so I'm not really big into those... Uh, mm. Um, I can totally relate to that. <laughs> yeah, some st standard games, just as you were, you were speaking there, um, the ones that you hadn't mentioned, but uh, but you said you like uh, action RPGs, so the maybe the the Torchlight series, Torchlight Two, is a particular favorite of mine, or um, Borderlands, Borderlands Two. I was so so much time into Borderlands Two, <laughs> it's <Yeah>. ridiculous. <laughs> um, I I I I have acquired Borderlands Three, but have not got around to playing it yet. Um, I think I I, I may, I don't know actually because my my current setup is not the most powerful. I'm I'm sure I could probably play it, but um, I'm nearly kind of holding off on it and going maybe if I build myself a new rig, then I'll I'll launch myself <laughs> into Borderlands Three. <laughs> I'm I'm one of these people who has a lot of things you can play games on, but very rarely plays games. <laughs> and I don't play nearly as much games as I would want to. Uh, I mean, maybe now a bit more, but I end up playing in like Sardou Valley most, mostly. Um, but yeah, I have this, like my main workstation is like getting five years old, five years old with a, like a very like cheap, graphics card i mean it's like a rx 580 so it's like 200 dollars it's very cheap compared to what you can get like on nvidia or uh like the high-end stuff and it runs pretty much everything i run like doom Eternal at 70 fps and i don't even know like what's the point of building a new system when you can get something that's five years old that will run pretty much like anything that's that's currently released uh, for clarification of a, of a 750 ti so it's, it's getting a bit old but uh, uh, no, for the mo for the most part, as I said, it, it plays Borderlands Two full 1080p perfectly. So I've, it's only now that there's there's newer games that are coming out um, that uh, there's something in the back of my mind going, yeah, that that might be a bit much for it. <laughs> but I, again, I, 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 to that point, I've I've not actually tried Borderlands Three. So Borderlands Three, I don't don't know if it has much more system requirements versus Borderlands Two. But um, Borderlands board, from the from the um, the trailers and everything, it does look like a more graphically intensive game. But I could be completely wrong. It could could have similar res, um, resource uh, uh, requirements as Borderlands Two. It does take way longer for um, a computer to play uh, less games than you think. I mean, like I, I know, like I've had, I had computers before for four or five years, and they, for eighty to ninety percent of their lifetime, they were able to play pretty much every game I wanted to play, new and old. So, you know, I think if you get the right spec when you're building your PC, um. And you don't go too old on the components, then you're set for like five, six years. I think um, you might have to turn down settings eventually, and you might have to turn off a few fancy effects. But it, you know, you're essentially okay for for quite a while. And you know, the the, the competitive PC gaming industry, whatever they are, they lie to you. <laughs> it's a conspiracy. 
They do. They tell you you need a six or seven hundred euro graphics card when you actually don't. Um, for uh, people that are curious, I mean, I, I am looking things up on Amazon. I'm not saying that I'm going to purchase anything. Um, certainly not in the short term. Um, possibly in the medium term to, to long term, but um, probably the CPU of the moment is the uh the AMD uh, th- three or thirty three hundred X. Um, it's about a hundred twenty dollar. Um, CPU that's a quad core eight thread CPU, and apparently it's it's punching way above its weight for a hundred twenty dollars. So there you go. That's my <laughs> recommendation. That's the new darling of the CPU world. I've been hearing about that as well. Yeah. So uh, Alutris is uh, GPL, the the general public license uh, licensed. Uh, what do you do? You have a strong preference GPL over say BSD or MIT, or is that? more or less accidental um no i wanted to make the main program gpl v3 um that was i think that was a good fit for for that program um I, the website is agpl so that's also or that i think that was like the most proper license for the websites i like the um, like MIT and Apache and all those, I like those as well, but more for like building blocks, like libraries or like some like components you would use in a program. But like for end user uh, product like Lutris, I think that the GPL v3 is like a good fit. A, 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 sl- a slightly fl- uh, flip of it. Uh, Matthew, you don't have any questions for us, do you? Do you? So who here is like a Lutris user? I have it installed, but I wouldn't say I'm a heavy Lutris user. No, I'm the same. I installed it um, just so I'd have some questions to ask you, basically. But, <laughs> uh, well, but I have. Uh, I've for known... clarification, I I did not install it about twenty minutes ago. I have it installed uh, uh, off and on over, over over my things. But yeah, I installed it two weeks ago. But um, but no, I really like the idea. I mean, oh no, yeah, it's very good. Use for it. It's it's a fantastic, it's crazy actually how how feature rich it is for for uh, for a kind of such a small project. Like it's really impressive. Um, no, to me the most interesting thing is, uh, and I know that, that that's not meant to sound like anything because you know as I said I'm not exactly expert on gaming. My uh, most of the gaming I've done over the few few past months would be getting my ass beaten by the uh, by the really a really 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 easy ai on uh, a zero id right and that's about the height of my gaming but i what really what i find really interesting is the way it's done technically say uh to to put together something that uh, that takes from different platform de- games for different platforms written in different languages at different times on different linux distributions and make it all work like that that sounds uh that sounds like you know we we know that like Steam does that, but Steam has got employees and uh, budgets and you know uh, infrastructure. The fact that you are doing it on your own that is amazing. Like uh, you know that's that's astonishing to be honest. That's like wow, head off, you know. <laughs> well, I'm I'm getting a little some help, but yeah, I mean the the bulk of it was uh yeah the the. The starting point was really having some way of preserving like our games that we, like our collection of games that we had built over the years, and having some kind of way to play them. So because like even Steam, they only care about selling you games, but they don't really care about letting you play like the games you had like 20 years ago or 30 years ago. So yeah, I mean, I wanted to have some kind of setup that was okay. You're not going to to lose what you had, I and mean, you're. You're going to be able to play the games you've had on your machine uh, for the foreseeable future, and that's something that's only—it's starting to be a problem because I'm starting to see like. So yeah, we're uh, we're seeing um, a trend of playing games on the cloud. So for example, for with Stadia, so you you stream games basically, uh, you don't run them on your computer. So I want to be sure that people are able to keep the games they had like on their computer and able to play them locally. 
I, I also the um, like yeah it's it's very much apparent from from the, your integ- integrations with different um stores like you have your steam your 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 GOG um uh, humble bundle things like that of is the whole thing of sure you you're you're saying to a user sure you might have games scattered around the place but here's this, a central place of just being able to if if it's a game launcher or just pull down the games just for um archival purposes and saying you you may not be um aware of how to pull down all your GOG games or all your humble bundle games or you might be aware of it but it's a lot of effort to go in and cl- manually go this game download this game download this game download other 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 web page or something like that but here you've you you've you made it really easy and um uh, as you mentioned before there isn't an official gog client for 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 linux so thank you very much thank you for like being for me being able to play just uh just a, a simple way of just being able to launch uh, my GOG games. Um, not, not that there's anything uh, bad uh, against GOG. I mean, some of their some of the their um, Linux ports of of games are actually really good. Or sometimes they um they uh, their older games um they they come up with um a Windows executable that is very wine friendly. So they they do their own custom development there as well. So, but uh, yeah, to have all of that and for it to just work on Linux is just brilliant. So thanks so much to uh, Matthew for coming on the show. It's been a it's been a really like fascinating conversation. Um, because as as I was saying, like the the subject of gaming is so is so important in the Linux world. So it's really interesting to hear kind of a voice from that whole area. Um. So big thanks for coming on. Um. As always, you can find us, uh, find all our contact details uh, at linuxlads.com forward slash contact. Um, you can get us on Twitter at linuxlads, show at linuxlads.com is the email address. You can find us on Mattermost and Signal and all that. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> you can find us on Carrier Pigeon. Um, any final thoughts, guys? Did I forget uh, any socials? Matthew, I always socials? forget one. Um, Matthew, socials? Ma- Matthew, would, Yes, that's what would I was you... forgetting. Matthew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How could people get in touch with you? Uh, the, um, there's Lutris on Twitter. There's Lutris on... Uh, uh, frankly, the best way to just uh, get in touch with us is just join our Discord server because that's where like most people are. And most of the people... Uh, like The team like is all on discord so yeah that would be the easiest way uh if you have something technical like really about the client or the website then you can always leave something on github but if it's just to chat and get in touch i mean discord is is really the best way because that's a way to get not in just with just me but also the other people who work on the project nice that's great um so you heard it here first um or last i don't know mike yeah no sorry uh, nothing i was uh, my brain has started boiling so i'm no longer functioning <laughs> right sorry. um without further ado um we have been uh, the linux lads i've been shane i've been mike i've been connor and uh, you've been and matthew I've matthew, been matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, see you all in another few days or weeks Bye. or something <laughs> <laughs>